Hi everybody, welcome back. <laughs> this is lesson seven from uh, chapter 11 for AP Chemistry and we're gonna do a couple more boiling point elevation and freezing point depression problems. So I think this is problem number nine in your notes. Um, and I know there's some things in the notes for some reason you didn't fill in because I saw that today when I was walking around. But I figured it'd be easier to like fill in those blanks tomorrow when you come in and I'll just put the notes on under the overhead. Don't forget to study your naming <coughs> and formulas because you'll have a naming and formula quiz tomorrow. All right, so here we go. What mass of ethylene glycol, the main component in antifreeze, must be added to 10 liters of water to produce a solution for use in a car's radiator that freezes at negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 23.3 <coughs> degrees Celsius? Assume the density of water is exactly one gram per mil. Okay. So let's write down what we're given and what they're asking us for. We want a solution that freezes. So we want the freezing point of the solution to be negative 23.3 degrees Celsius. You should know the freezing point of the solvent. The solvent here is pure water and water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. If you don't know, they're given to you in table 11.5 in your textbook, you can just look them up. So the normal freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius. So if you know what no water normally freezes at and you know we want to depress the freezing point to negative 23.3, you can get the freezing point depression or you can get the change, the difference between the freezing point of the pure solvent and the freezing point of the solution. So I know here my delta T then is going to be 23.3 degrees Celsius, okay? Um, we know the equation once we know the delta T is equal to the molality times the KF times I. And they tell you it's ethylene glycol, which is covalent, so we know that for ethylene glycol the I is 1, right? Brett's leaving, bye Brett. Okay, so we know that I is one and um, we have the delta T and we have the freezing point depression constant. So I don't know if it's gonna help us or not, but it looks like we can solve this equation for molality. What can you get with what you're given? We can get molality. So our delta T is 23.3 degrees Celsius. Our molality is our X. We don't know our moles of solute or our kilograms of solvent, though we have the enough information to find that. Um, our freezing point depression constant for water is 0.51 degrees Celsius kilograms per mole, and our I is 1, okay? So we can solve for our molality if we just simply divide those, 23.3 divided by 0.51, and that's going to give us 45.69 Mole and that <coughs> molality, remember, is moles of solute per kilogram solvent. And you know what? This is not 0 0.51. 0 0.51 is the boiling point elevation constant, the freezing point to depression constant is 1.86. Sorry about that. Did you know that? Over there? Peanut yeah. gallery? Yeah. Yeah? And no, you got 12.53 really like okay. mole. I remember doing this. Okay. Okay, so now I have the molality. I have enough information to get my kilograms of solvent. I can solve for the moles of solute, right? Because molality equals moles of solute per kilogram solvent. So before I plug and chug into that formula, let me get the kilograms of solvent. They told me I had 10 liters of water. And the density of water is one gram per mil. So knowing that, I can get the mass of water, right? Density equals mass over volume. 
mass equals density times volume, but be careful. If the density of water is one gram per mil, and our volume of water is 10 liters, we need to convert that to milliliters. So we need to multiply that by 1,000 to get that in milliliters. So one 10 liters is 10,000 milliliters. So the mass of our water is equal to 10,000 grams, which is the same as 10 kilograms. So now I can go ahead and plug into the molality formula here. We have the molality, 12.53. We do not know our moles of solute, but we know we have 10 kilograms of solvent. So our moles of solute are going to be 125.3 moles of that crazy solute, which is ethylene glycol. And the molar mass of that is 62.1. So if I take our answer, 125.3, and multiply it by 62.1, I'll get what they were looking for. 7,781 grams of ethylene glycol. Wow, that's a lot. <coughs> Must be added to 10 liters of water. That's a lot of water in order to lower the freezing point that much. And I'm betting that all our sig figs were three up here. So we would have to convert that to three sig figs. So 7,780 grams. Okay? So sometimes you may not have the roadmap ahead of time, but if you're given, you know, freezing point depression, you can find molality. And if you're given molality, then you can find usually the moles of solute and take things from there to the grams, which is what they wanted to know. Problem number 10. A chemist is trying to identify a human hormone that controls metabolism by determining molar mass. A sample weighing 0.54 grams, <coughs> 6 grams of hormone, was dissolved in 15 grams of benzene. And so benzene, this is different, because benzene is our solvent, not water here. We're dissolving the hormone in benzene. And the freezing point depression was determined to be 0 0.240. So this time, they're actually giving us the delta T. The freezing point depression is your delta T. We don't know the freezing point of the solvent. They didn't give us the freezing point of the solution, which normally we would subtract those to get delta T. They're simply just giving us the delta T. So the delta T is 0 0.240 degrees Celsius, and they want the molar mass. Again, molar mass has the units grams per mole. We have the grams. So everything that we do in this problem is going to be to find the moles of this hormone, okay? Since they gave us the freezing point depression, hopefully you're realizing that you should be using the freezing point depression formula, where delta T equals molality times KF times I. Now, hormones are big, huge covalent molecules. So uh, like that one in your homework that you're working on, like thyroxine, right? It's a hormone. Covalent molecules, I equals one. So when I equals one, if you want to just exclude it from the equation, that's okay. We have the delta T, 0 0.240. We do not have the molality, so that's what we will solve this problem for. And we need to find in our table the KF for benzene, because they didn't give it to us in the question. So let's look <coughs> up in table 11.5 the KF for benzene. So if you look it up in table 11.5, Jess said it's 5.12, Jess and Jess, Jess squared. Um, degrees Celsius, kilograms per mole, okay? So to get the molality by itself, you'll take 0 0.240 and divide it by 5.12, and you get 0 0.04. Four, six, eight, seven, five. 
Okay, so then where do you go next? Well, since you have the molality, it kind of makes sense to then go to the molality formula and see what we can get from here. Because molality formula actually has in it what it is we're looking for, which is the moles of solute that we need to find the molar mass. So molality equals the moles of solute per kilogram solvent. Who was the solvent in this question? Benzene. Benzene. And they gave us the grams of it right there, 15 grams. So we can convert that to kilograms, right? There's our solvent right there. So we can convert that to kilograms and just plug it in with the molality to solve for the moles. Piece of cake. So 0 0.0, oh man, that doesn't look like 0 0.046875 equals x over 0 0.0150. And if you cross multiply to solve for your x, <clears throat> you should get 7.03 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of solute. And now we have enough information to solve for molar mass because molar mass is the grams over the moles. I forgot what the grams were, but we'll go look them up in just a minute. What were the grams? 0.546. Oh my goodness, what do you get? 777? I think this is the one in the homework. It's actually different numbers. Is it? Yeah. I think doesn't the molar mass come out to be almost the same thing? With yeah. 776. 776? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, that's really big molar mass, but hormones are really big things. They're just giant chains of proteins together, okay? And I think that's it for today. Um, again, we have that little section of fill-ins, and I don't have it up here, so I think it'd just be easier if I shot it up on the camera tomorrow. Finish those problems, homework number four, except for problem 40, especially you, Chris Drake, because I know you don't ever do the book problems. Get so make on. sure you do that, okay? And you too, Christian. Okay, we'll see you. Have a good night. Bye, Sarah.